this is me talk today. Uh, my name is Bryson Shaleen, um, and today I'm going to talk to you about my master's thesis at University of British Columbia, uh, which was a look at using genomic analysis to manage invasive rat populations in Haida Gwaii, BC. So when I'm talking about invasive rats, I'm talking particularly about the species here, Ratus marvegicus, or the brown rat. And these are actually among the most invasive animals on the planet. If we look at their global distribution, shown in red here, they're found on every inhabited continent. So this is actually a global issue. What makes them so successful as invaders is they're highly adaptable species. They've been shown to eat every established population. Once established, then they're excellent competitors and often outcompete over native farm, native farm. Uh, and this can lead to all sorts of population level impacts, like range contractions and declines, uh, but it can also lead to whole species extinctions. Um, beyond just the population of the level impacts, though, there are whole ecosystem impacts from invasive rats, where it's actually been shown to reduce productivity in both terrestrial and aquatic systems. Not all systems are affected equally, though. Islands are particularly affected by rat invasions. And this is because a lot of time there are no terrestrial predators on islands. So the native fauna are poorly, adopt or poorly adapted to deal with this novel predator. Of all groups of animals, seabirds are the most impacted. And this is largely due to their pelagic feeding strategy, where they'll leave their nest to go feed in the open ocean. And a lot of them are terrestrial nesting species, again, with that absence of a terrestrial predator. And what this does is it leaves their nest open for rat predation. The rats will come in and actually eat the eggs. They can eat chicks, and in some cases, even eat the adult birds. And it's important to note the sensitivity of islands, as rats are actually found on over 80% of islands worldwide. Uh, and this includes uh, Haida Gwaii, British Columbia. So this is an archipelago, an isolated archipelago off the central coast of British Columbia. Um, and it's kind of really known for its uh, high levels of unique biodiversity. And this includes a very large contingent of seabirds. There's about 1.5 million seabirds that nest across the archipelago. In the cases of this uh, ancient murelet and the captain's offlet, this can incorporate up to half of their global breeding population. So let me stress that these species are not just a local issue, but one of species persistence. Unfortunately, rats have invaded Haida Gwaii. They arrived sometime in the 1700s, slightly from European settlers, and they've since spread throughout the islands. And this has resulted in devastating negative impacts on native seabird populations, as well as affected other, uh, other systems. Fortunately, eradication of rats from whole islands can lead to seabird recovery, and in some cases can even be reported in a very short period of time. And it's already been seen in Haida Gwaii show some uh, recovery. So to further recover these seabird populations, Parks Canada began eradicating rats from whole islands in 1997. Since then, there's been seven successful rat eradications. Uh, in the case of Faraday and Murchison, uh, shown here, black rats were effectively removed from the islands in 2012, but they've been recently uh, invaded by brown rats. So there's, been there's two invasive species in Haida Gwaii. Today, I'm just talking about the brown rats. In the case of the Bischoff's Islands here, there have been two attempted eradications, and in both cases, there's been a subsequent redetection of rats on the island. It turns out that this eradication failure on islands is actually not that uncommon. About one in five eradications fails, and a lot of time the reason is unknown. But there are two prevailing hypotheses of why are these eradications failing. The first one is a survivor hypothesis, in which a group of survivors made it through the eradication and went on to repopulate the island. The second one looks at a reinvasion from a neighboring source population. It's important to note which one of these has actually caused the current population as you manage it differently. If it's in the case of the survivors, you need to look at maybe using a different eradication technique to effectively remove all rats from the island. If it's a reinvasion, you need to look at a larger target area, or perhaps eradicating multiple populations simultaneously in what's called an eradication unit. And all of this is really to prevent reinvasion. This is where my research come in, uh, comes in, whereas I'm really helping uh, to inform future management of rat populations in the archipelago. So my first objective was to look at population connectivity of Long Island populations to start identifying those with the lowest risk of reinvasion, as well as identify eradication units. I also looked explicitly for that survivor versus reinvader hypothesis on the Bischoff's Islands, as well as look at Faraday and Murchison to see the source of those novel populations. And then lastly, I uh, worked with Fordham University, 
uh, using a globally compiled data set to actually identify the historical source of brown rats in Haida Gwaii. To achieve this, we sampled rats from across the archipelago, and we also included uh, set genotypic data from 330 reference samples across the global rat distribution, and these were provided by Fordham University. We extracted whole genomic DNA and genotyped this using DD rat sequencing. Uh, we ended up getting about 28,000 SNPs for the local level analyses, and then for the global origins question, we had about 12,000 SNPs. So to get our first objective, uh, which is looking at population connectivity along islands, uh, we largely predicted that this was going to follow uh, the rules of island biogeography theory, in that islands that are larger and more proximate to a source population are going to have higher rates of colonization and higher rates of, of connectivity than islands that are smaller and more distant. What we found was fairly close to what this, uh, that island biogeography theory. And where we see islands that are close together share a high amount of genetic diversity. So these are admixture plots, just showing mean uh, admixture coefficients uh, for each population. So islands that are close together have high levels of shared diversity, and islands that are larger have genetic diversity or shared diversity with all other islands around. So for that second objective, we were looking at that Bischoff, Faraday, Murchison populations to determine their source. And our prediction was this was going to be a reinvasion from the neighboring Lyle Island. So if you look at Lyle here, where you see Bischoff's, you can see Faraday. Uh, the distance between these is relatively short for rats. It's a five to 700 meter swim, uh, which is actually well within the swimming distance for brown rats. They've been shown to swim uh, up to two miles in open ocean. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> so what we did find was in fact actually a reinvasion. So if we looked at, this is a projected principal component analysis, and so we first defined the parameter space using just the reference samples, which are shown in the triangles, and then we had project onto our non unknown samples in case the black circles to see which population it most closely clusters with. And so in this we included uh, Lyle and then Richardson as potential source populations, and we also had uh, samples from before the eradication to determine explicitly if that was a group from uh, repopulated from survivors. And what we see is that the Haida Gwaii or current, or current fish house population does cluster with the Lyle uh, Island. This is really strong support for a reinvasion and not a group of survivors. The Faraday and Murchison, which are shown in yellow and blue here, uh, we can also see that they cluster really nice with this Lyle Island population. Uh, so this, again, is one of the most likely source of these rats. So for the third objective, uh, we were looking at identifying the global origin of brown rats uh, in Haida Gwaii. So a previous study by Pocket et al. actually did look at